as long as you are a human being, as long as you are breathing, your pulse is still Temptation is something that is bound to happen. Amen. Married people have temptations of married people. Single people have temptation, have temptations of single people. Amen. Those who've been long or been saved for quite a long time, they have temptations of their length and their in their experience and their knowledge in the Lord. Amen. And we said last week that um, temptation does not come from God. Amen. But temptation comes from the evil one or from Satan. Amen. That is why we said God said when he was teaching his disciples how to pray, and he made this line clear to not lead us into temptation. And we said temptation is an enticement that is brought by the devil leading us to sin. But when the enticement is brought in front of our eyes, sin and disobedience is hidden. Temptation is brought in front of us as something that is pleasurable something that is desirable, something that you cannot miss not to take, something that you crave, you long to have, something that is promised that when you, when you have got it, you will get the ultimate satisfaction. Now, when temptation is brought in our eyes, in our minds, in our hearts, it is something that is brought in with a hidden agenda that it will give us happiness, joy, and comfort and satisfaction. Amen. It is something that is brought forward so that when we see it, we it is irresistible. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 When you look at where we, when it's brought into your eyes or into your mind or into your senses or into your attention, it is something that you tell yourself, man, I cannot see or miss this moment, just a sip or just once, just to get a taste of it. Amen. That is what the devil does when he brings temptation. And, and when temptation is brought into in front of in front of our eyes, the consequences of it are hidden. Hallelujah. The consequences of it are hidden. What is brought in front of our eyes is the pleasure and the environment and the enjoyment of a short while. Amen. We remember we said last week that the Bible said in Genesis chapter three the snake is what was one of the most cunning animals. And we tried to unpack the meaning of the word cunning. Amen. If you cunning means it's the strap if the devil or Satan is a strategist of deception. Amen. He's very skillful in lying. Hallelujah. He, he, he will bring something that looks good and glamorous, knowing exactly once you touch it, you are disconnected to God. Hallelujah. But the disconnection with God is not in your eyes. What is in your eyes is what is in front of you, what is pleasurable, what is nice, and you would even go to an extent that you can do this, man. And you can just confess it and go on with your life. While we have confessed it, we have tasted the goodness of it. Yeah. Am I clear? That's what temptation does. Hallelujah. Don't, you don't have to worry about this, man. You can just have a sip of it. And once you have done it, if you feel guilty about it, just go for confession. On Sunday, an altar call will be called. You don't, have, you don't even have to say it. You just raise your hand, and it is erased. It is a lie. Mm. A sin that is done deliberately is not forgiven. That is biblical. Amen. 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 So when temptation is brought in front of our then excitement and pleasure is what is, is pictured in front of us. 
the consequences of it, the serpent hides them. Amen. If you read the book of Genesis chapter 3, it says the snake was the most cunning animal. And the Bible used the word serpent. Amen. If you, if, you, if you look at the Hebrew meaning of the word serpent, the Hebrew meaning of the word serpent in, in, in normal English translation, it says it's something that is something that is beautiful and shiny. A serpent is something that is beautiful and shiny. In other words, a snake before it was cursed, it was just something nice and beautiful, something that was, that, that was easy to socialize with something that was easy to be comfortable with. Amen. So Satan, when, when Satan got into a snake, he was very strategic. He used something, it's, a snake is called a serpent because it's one of the creatures that God created that looked good, that was attractive and sociable before it was cast. Amen. In other words, our mind and understanding of a snake now is something that is not desirable, is something that when, when, whenever we see it, we run away. But when God created it in the beginning, before it was kept, it was just a normal creature that everybody wanted to socialize. Are you hearing me? Amen. So that is why the devil used a snake. Because he, he used a snake strategically, because it was something that we would normally socialize with Adam and Eve. They would normally chat with it without a problem. So he used something that was beautiful, something that was shiny, something that was good to socialize with. And he entered into the snake. Amen. Now, the sad thing about this passage, Genesis chapter 3, is that when the snake goes into the woman, it says, did God really say you must not eat into this woman? It makes it clear that the serpent was very strategic. Amen. Because when, 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 when the serpent was saying, it, in actual fact, the serpent was challenging the command of God. Because God gave a clear command that you don't eat, you eat, you die. Amen. But when the serpent comes up, did God really say you must not eat? In other words, the serpent is, is turning what has been made a command into a question. Are you hearing me? The command was clear. You've got everything in the garden. It belongs to you. You can have fun. You can have pleasure. You can enjoy yourselves. But the one in the middle, don't go there. Because as soon as you go there, you will show it. Amen. And it was clear. But when the snake comes into and the, the instruction was clear, the instruction had no questions. It was just a command, a clear command that they never hassled with, a command that they never questioned with. But when the snake comes, because the snake is cunning, it is deceptive, full of tricks and lies, very strategic, very eloquent. Amen. Because did God really say? You must not eat the did God really say? Now changing the command because full of lies. Hallelujah. And we said the other day, even the tone. Amen. Because when the serpent wants to knock you, we said the other day, he will use a very soft tone. Amen. Like a man proposing a woman, even bowing to the knee and promising that they don't have. Promise heaven that has never been true. That is all of Because you want to lie. Because when, because when you want to get something out of someone, you bring the best behavior so that the person can see that this person who is saying this is an angel, but knowing that as soon as you fall into the trap, you are left alone. That's what temptation is. And unfortunately, once you touch and you fall, we hear nothing about the serpent immediately. Immediately when Eve took the apple and ate, we don't hear anything about the serpent. The serpent never worried about the consequences. Amen. And we said the other day that sin is never done coincidentally or accidentally. Amen. You know, in Tosa, you have this funny statement, you say, oh, you are the son of a such a thing. 
<laughs> Amen. It's either you choose to sin or you choose not to. Sin is never accidental. Amen. Sin is done consciously. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 It's either you listen to the small voice or it's either you neglect the small voice. It's easy and that. Sin is not accidental. Hallelujah. But today I just want us to focus on how do we prevent the temptation. Amen. Or how do we resist temptation? I think today that's where I want us to focus on. We have unpacked what temptation is, and we have, we have unpacked how temptation comes into our lives. But today, I just want us to focus on how to resist the temptation. Can we read into the book? We welcome the pastor. Who we read in the book of Ephesians, chapter six. Ephesians, chapter six, verse ten. Verse ten. Finally, be strong in the Lord and, and in his mighty power. Verse 11. Put on the full armor of God so that you can take your stand against the devil's king. Verse 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. Therefore, put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground, and after you have done everything, to stand. Stand firm then with the belt of truth buckled around your waist, with the breastplate of righteousness in place, and with your feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel of peace. That's 16. In addition to all this, take up the shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. Take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Very briefly, because of time, we spoke about temptation. I just want us to focus now on how do we resist temptation or how do we defend ourselves against temptation. We are reading into the book of Ephesians. We are told that the book of Ephesians was written by Paul and during the time that he wrote the book of Ephesians, it, is, it was the time when he was arrested in Rome it was the time when there were afflictions and conflict into the church of Ephesus. He, was, he went there to write this book, having in mind, number one, trying to unite the church, number two, trying to make sure that they understand the purpose of God and the purpose of salvation. And three, the one that I want us to talk about, that they understand that in as much as they are saved and they believe in God, we've got the evil one. Amen. We spoke about the resist resisting temptation. Amen. We have, we, if you read from verse one, amen. From the beginning, the Bible says, be strong. Hallelujah that the enemy we are fighting with was defeated in the mountain of Calvary. Amen. The enemy we are talking about when Jesus Christ died at the cross, he overcame every human power and every supernatural power that human beings would use to destroy other human beings. Amen. When he died on the cross, even the devil himself was defeated. Amen. And he's saying to the church, be strong. Hallelujah. You don't live. Being saved does not necessarily mean that everybody will love you. Amen. Being saved does not necessarily mean everybody will speak the language 
that you speak. Amen. To other people to say that you are saved, it is an insulting word. Amen. You, you are viewed or you are seen as somebody who tries or who thinks he or she is smart. You are viewed or you are seen as somebody who thinks is better than other people. You are viewed and seen as somebody that thinks heaven is only for himself. You are viewed and seen and accused as somebody who is trying to be perfect. When you are saved, you are viewed and seen as somebody whom, whom people think cannot associate with, the, with other people who are unbelievers. Hallelujah. You must remember, we must love sinners but not sin. Let me repeat. We must love sinners but not sin. Amen. When we love sinners, we want them to come into the body of Christ. But we do not love sin. Amen. Because sin will never allow us to inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. So Paul says here in the beginning, we must be strong. Hallelujah. To be saved is not just a ticket to heaven. Amen. To be saved means sometimes that even in your family, once you utter that you are saved, nobody will be comfortable with that because others view some view safety people as people who are antisocial to family members. Hallelujah. Yes. Some people view saved person as a person who is trying to be destructive in the family. Amen. Some view a saved person as a person who is trying to take away the norms and the customs and the rituals of the family. Amen. Hence, once you utter that you are saved, you are immediately seen as a black sheep or as an outcast of the family, but you must be strong. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And it is very important that when you are saved, you portray the character and the behavior of Jesus Christ. Amen. When you, when you are saved in your household, you find out that there are people that are not, that are not saved. Just be a good person. Amen. Because being, because nobody will ever fight goodness. Hallelujah. But if you've got pride, they will give you problems. If you judge them, they will give you problems. If you say they are unbelievers, they will give you problems. But if you just become a good person, then it's, it's fine. Hallelujah. Remember when you read the Bible, when you read the fruit of the Spirit in the Bible, the Bible says against these things Nobody is against them. Amen. In other words, if you live good to the family and you are smart, you do things that you don't normally do. If they send you something, you do, you are with them, you, you, you just become a good person. Hallelujah. As long as you become a good person, you attract them to want to know what has happened to you. Hallelujah. Amen. You don't, you don't just go back home and when you reach home, Say, ah, listen me, I'm saved now. A, B, C, and D, I don't do. C, D, and E belongs to you. You don't come with that attitude because it will give you problems. Hallelujah. We don't, we don't want salvation to be seen as something of rebellion. Hallelujah. Remember the Bible says in the book of Mark chapter 8, salvation brings good news. Hallelujah. And anything that is good attracts Hallelujah. Just become a good person. And when you do good, you just become a good child or a good brother or a good sister or a good nephew doing good. Everybody starts to becoming attractive to you. Everybody wants to socialize with you. What is it with you? Hallelujah. Even at home in the tents of in the tents of washing the dishes, you just don't say don't mind. The whole month I will cook. The whole month I will do dishes. The whole month I will do the washing. What is it with you? Hallelujah. I'm just making an illustration. I'm not saying you must abuse yourself. I'm just illustrating an aspect of being good. Hallelujah. Something that you know, if you do at home, people will appreciate it. It will be a wow. Do a wow at home. Hallelujah. And when you do a wow, people will wonder. 
Hallelujah. And when they wonder, you utter that I met Jesus. And they will say, if Jesus does this to my child or to my brother, he's a God to be followed. Hallelujah. Now, even, even when you bring things that you do not like, they will say, ah, as long as this Jesus gives you this behavior, I don't mind if you don't do A, B, C, and D. The rest that we have done is a wow already. Are you hearing me? Somebody must be hearing me. I hope you are hearing me. Hallelujah. Resisting temptation. Amen. Be strong in the Lord. Hallelujah. Now the Bible says you are not fighting against western flesh and blood, but against the strategies. Amen. I want us to underline the word the strategy of the devil. Amen. And the devil is not the devil is not just a, a Mickey Mouse ordinary person that you need to undermine and, and not take notice of it. Amen. I'm saying this being cautious of not necessarily giving him credit and honor, but somebody that you must be mindful of. Amen. That in the life of being saved, there is somebody who is behind me who does not want me to see God one day. There is somebody who will come into my mind and show me things that will never lead me to heaven. Hallelujah. And the Bible says we are not fighting against flesh and blood, but against the strategies. Amen. Satan is a strategist. Amen. And one of the strategies that he uses to Christian into the church is for people to shake hands and smile at each other. But when they turn back against each other, they say, never, never trust that one is a snake. Amen. But when they come to each other, they smile, they laugh, they hug. Once they turn their backs against each other, they speak bad about one another. They don't like one another. Amen. And the devil is his strategy. And he's very happy with that because he knows that they just live in pretense of or, or, or they just live in pretense of being artificial, of continuing churchianity continuing in the midst of services, and yet in their mind, they don't speak the same language. The strategies. The devil is a strategist. So we need to be mindful of that. But now there are a few things that Paul warns us that we need to make sure we, we keep them, so that when we have kept them, we will be able to stand against the forces of the devil. He says, number one, you put on the belt of truth. Amen. Put on, the first one, the belt of truth. Amen. Be a truthful person. Amen. Lies are from the pit of hell. Truth sometimes does not make you popular. Amen. But as long as it is the truth, it makes your conscience and your heart clear with God. Amen. Amen. Be a truthful person. Once you start living with lies, conniving tricks, you will never be able to see God one day. And you are one of the kids and the daughters of the evil one. Amen. And Paul says the belt of truth must be around your waist. Be a person of truth. Amen. If something has disturbed you, don't continue to worship and to attend services while you are wounded. Stop! Hallelujah. And say, brethren, something has happened to me. Look for an elderly person, pastor who is around, and other people who are elderly who can help you. Amen. Don't continue while you are wounded. Be a truthful person. Speak the truth. Nothing else but the truth. Amen. Because only the truth will make you to be able to see God. Hence Matthew, Matthew 5 verse 6 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Cleanse yourself. First John chapter 1 verses 9. 
If we say we are not sinners, we are liars. Amen. Some people just want to end there. Uh-uh. Let's not end there. You know those who like sinning, hallelujah, and come to church and clap hands. If we say we are not sinners, we are liars. Then they close the Bible. Then they go and sin. Hallelujah. People who are used by the strategies of the evil one. Let's go down with the verse. Amen. Because you can't make a doctrine out of one verse. A doctrine is made out of a chapter so that a context is created. But if we go down, if we confess our sin, Amen. He is trustworthy to forgive us. Amen. And confession is speaking nothing else but it's the truth. The truth that Paul says it must be under his belt. Amen. Be a truthful believer. Hallelujah. If there is a man or a woman that is bothering you in the corridors of your room, speak about it. Speak the truth. Amen. If social networks are driving you crazy, they make your knees tremble. Speak the truth. If you've got a crush on a certain brother or a sister, speak the truth. Come follow me, brother, and so I'm tired of me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Am I too hard? Nothing else but the truth. Only will set us free. Amen. We speak the truth. Amen. One thing that is nice about the truth, it makes your conscience clear. It makes your heart clear. It, 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 it unpacks your motives. Amen. And Paul says to resist the devil, you must speak the truth. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Nothing else but the truth. Don't never compromise the truth. Never compromise the prince, the biblical principle. Nothing else but the truth. Amen. The truth will, and as we have said, the truth can lead you into disgrace, but it is better to, to be disgraced and go to heaven than to lie and walk with us and die in the pit of hell. I would rather suffer affliction with the children of God than enjoy the pleasures of sinning for a moment, for a moment as you always sing that song. So just speak the truth. Amen. Secondly, wear the shoes of peace. Amen. Be a peaceful person. Hallelujah. Never be a, a believer who is full of crutches. Never be a believer who is full of negativity and conniving. A true Christian is a peaceful Christian. Amen. Remember, to forgive, it's a choice. Hallelujah. To forget, it's a process. Amen. Let me repeat. To forgive, it's a choice. But to forget, it's a process. Hallelujah. Hence, we said in the beginning, it's a, a closer statement that says, it's a lie. Amen. Sin is never accidental. Amen. Sin is a choice. It's either you choose to run away like nobody tells you, says, or you choose to fall into it. Hallelujah. I like that woman when he says, Balika. <laughs> Balika. <laughs> there are places that you need not to stay. Hallelujah. Never be smart in a danger zone. Never be too clever in a danger zone. Never be too casual and tricky and never be too holy. You must run. Amen. Hallelujah. Like exactly what Joseph did. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. He had the verses to rely on. He had the power of the Holy Spirit to rely on. He had the revelations and the time to rely on. 
But in the situation did not meet Rikaranda Ramashita. It needed him to run. Hallelujah. Amen. It needed him to run. Don't try to be too smart. You are going to, to get yourself into danger and you will regret. And the third thing about the snake or the serpent, it throws you into the problem and once you are there, it's a seminal seminal war. Hallelujah. Wear the shoes of peace. Amen. Never be a believer that is full of crutches. Never be a believer that is full of an unhealed past. Amen. You must be able to cough out everything. Hallelujah. Because when you are not a peaceful person, you are even hurting yourself. Amen. You can't you can claim to be spiritual and yet you don't live in peace with other people. Amen. A spiritual person is a loving person. A spiritual person is a peaceful person. A spiritual person is a joyful person. A spiritual person is a disciplined person. Spirituality is not limited in falling out of chairs and crying. Hallelujah. As we have said, there's a difference between being emotional and spiritual, but we are not there. Be a loving person. Wear the shoes of peace. Amen. As we have said, that the serpent is very strategic, very polite. Amen. When he comes to you, he comes very soft. When the devil wants to make you to fall, he does not come to you aggressive. Hallelujah. No, you won't come aggressive. You won't hold you like this and say, hey, here's a woman, or here's money. No, you will come very soft. How are you, my brother? <laughs> Listen, I've got something good for you. Can you see this picture? It looks beautiful. It's very attractive. Just a sip of it. Just a little bit. Not too much. Just like a five on it. Do you understand? God will understand. No. The brother is not necessarily just take the time, just take the time. Just take the time. It's not something that you should worry about, man. Actually, you, you can you can have a time on it. Then on Sunday you just come to the altar call, then it just disappears. Just take a try. And as soon as you got into it, you won't regret it. Just take a sip. Just try, man. You would see it's a wow, it's pleasurable. It's something that you would want to be very strategic and soft. Speak very soft. Hallelujah. Very soft. So you need to be very careful. We are not fighting an, a, a little man. We are fighting a very dangerous man. Hallelujah. But he has been defeated. Hallelujah. It's just that we are saying in this story we must be cautious of who you are fighting with. Amen. Because if you don't understand your opponent, it can knock you. Hallelujah. You need to be able to know, okay, I've got an opponent that is like this. Okay, I know his strategies. Then it's fine. Let me continue with my way of life. Let me continue to God. Hallelujah. We are just taking a picture of him understanding. We don't even, we don't even have to Google about him. We don't, even, we don't even have to find his strategies. But what is important is that we must understand we've got a very dangerous enemy. That was all dangerous as he is, he was defeated. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Secondly, thirdly, faith. Hallelujah. We need to have faith in God. Amen. Faith is that he, as much as he is conniving, as much as he's got strategies, as much as he is deceptive, as much as he's speaking in a small voice, but we've got faith that he who is above us is above all. Mm-hmm. Amen. In as much as he can try all his tricks and funny ways, we've got faith that the God we serve is able to defeat 
and destroy all the strategies and the plots and the evils of the devil. Amen. We've got to believe that. Amen. Even if circumstances around our communities are telling us that he is powerful, but we believe that he, 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 may, he may be gasping for a moment, but his day is coming Amen. that he will be changed forever. Hallelujah. He will, he will listen to unbelievers. Hey, this man is powerful. Look at what he does at Deep Throat, killing children. Look at how many divorces he is creating. China, we've portrayed that his day is coming. Yes. Hallelujah. He may be rooming around now, but we know that his days are numbered. And the one whom we are serving is going to destroy soon, and not just soon, but very soon. And you must always remember that the serpent does not worry about the world. Hallelujah. He's worried about us. Hallelujah. Because the world, already, the world is already in his territory. The world is already in his hand. But he's worried about us. Hallelujah. He's worried about deceiving us. He's worried about squabbling us. He's worried about making us miserable. He's worried about lying to us. So that is why we need to be conscious of him. In as much as we are conscious of him, knowing that he's under our feet. Hallelujah. So we must have faith that even if the world may, may be cruel and evil, but we've got faith that who he is about is above all. And the fourth one, we must have the helmet of salvation. Amen. I, I like the helmet because the, a helmet goes to the head. Hallelujah. Our head must be right. A person who is riding a motorbike, he or she cannot go on the road unless the helmet is on top. Hallelujah. We must have the helmet of salvation. Our mind must be right. Hallelujah. Because one of the strategies of the serpent are to corrupt the mind, are to entice the mind, are to make the mind look for lustful things, are to make the mind look for the world, are to make the, the, the mind crave for sin, are to make the mind have lustful acts. Hallelujah. We normally say that the mind is a very important component of us. Hallelujah. Because when the devil attacks the mind, we might not necessarily be doing sin physically actively. Hallelujah. But the mind is full of sin. Hallelujah. In bed, there is no sin. Hallelujah. On corridors, there is no sin. But in the mind, there is full of, the mind is full of men. It's full of money, full of pornography, full of evil pictures, full of everything. And Paul says you must put on the helmet of salvation. Be careful of what is in your mind. Be careful of what you feed your mind with. Be careful of what your mind captures. Because, because what is in your mind translates to what is happening physically. Amen. What is happening outward is what began in the mind. So we must, our mind must have a helmet of salvation so that when the evil thought comes, the helmet is there. When, 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 when thoughts of sinful nature come, the helmet is there. Hallelujah. The helmet of salvation must be in the mind. Be careful of what you feed your mind. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because you are what you eat. Amen. What you incorporate in your mind is what you become. Hallelujah. And the mind is... And the mind... The issue of the mind is very sad. Hallelujah. Because you can tell the Bible and sing choruses and speak in tongues, but the mind is not being restored. Hallelujah. Or the mind is not liberated. Hallelujah. Because everybody, when he or she comes into the church, wants to wear a behavior of the church, wants to wear the attitude of the church. 
Hallelujah. Unfortunately, we cannot read a human mind. Hallelujah. But, you, but when you are alone, you know what is in your mind. You know what thoughts and thinking is in your mind. So you must be careful with what is in your mind because what is in your mind can lead you into sinful nature, especially if you did not put the helmet of salvation. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And, and for you to have the helmet of salvation is to always erase what is ungodly. Never entertain what does not bring you close to God. Hallelujah. Never entertain that because it will lead you to sin. And once you have fallen, it is hard to come up. Hallelujah. And even if when you come up, hallelujah, the book of Hebrews, it says you are like a meat. Hallelujah. That has been thrown into the sand. Hallelujah. Even if, even if the mother, if, it, if, it, if, it, if if the meat has fallen into a cell, hallelujah, even if the mother washes it, hallelujah, and puts, and puts it back in the pot, but when you bite it, you can still say, ah, ah, something has happened to this meat. We have forgiven you. You are going to heaven. There's no doubt about that. Hallelujah. But when we try to grasp something from you, it is not chewable. Because it comes from something that is once fallen. So be careful on how you live. God bless you, Come.